I'm confident that I am loved. I know.
church today we're so glad that you're here with us as we worship one lord and one faith and one baptism to the hope that we all have through jesus the christ bow with me in a word of prayer father we thank you on this day we acknowledge you as our lord and our savior thank you for making yourself known to us and because of this knowledge we are now moved we're now pushed to worship you the way you desire to be worshiped so father we'll lay everything else to the side and we present ourselves to you father and we thank you that you are that your son is standing there representing us all as you continue as, 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 a, as jesus christ continues to intercede for us we thank you for this opportunity thank you for our time together father be pleased with our worship as we present it to you in jesus name amen go ahead and gather all the family close to you and let's worship the lord together here we go let's praise the lord for you this morning we come to lift the one the good one let's say arise arise oh god and take your place and take your place let your kingdom be established, let your kingdom be established. oh ancient of days oh, ancient how many of you know he's good, you are good. and your mercy endure and forever in your home. Sing with us as we say, Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. And take your place. Take your place. We enthrone you with our worship. You with and God, we glorify your name. We glorify your name. Say, you are, good. you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Standing on, your standing on your promise because you said that the just shall live by faith you are good and your mercy one more time let's sing it together say arise We've come to give you glory. We have come to give you glory. We have come to give you praise. Because you you've been good. You've been good. And your mercy is forever. And if there's anybody excited about that, put your hands together and bless him. today, God. Please accept our worship as we give you glory. If y'all know what we say, uh, you are good, so good. That's the part right there. Let's all get on one accord and sing together. Say, you are good, so good. That's it. It's simple. All on one accord. One note. Say, you are good. You are good, so good. Let's everybody in this place say you are good. You are good, so good. Let's lift the name together. Say you are good, so good. We love you, Jesus. We lift you today, and we thank you. You are good, so good. We 
worship. God, we thank you. You're worthy of praise. You are still good. You never stopped being good, even when circumstances were bad. You've been good all the same, and so we bless your name right here. Feel free to tell the Lord thank you. All it takes is one reflection. All it takes is one time to think back to the one time that God did it, to the one time that he showed you how good he was. And nobody but the Lord can do that. Thank you, Lord, for always being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for the ultimate example of your goodness to us, laying down your life that we may live. We praise your name, Lord. By his stripes we are healed By his nail-pierced hands I'm free By his blood I'm washed clean Now I have the victory The power of sin is broken Jesus overcame it all. That's still true. Oh, he has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You have won.
This is you talking to the Lord. You are the risen King, seated in majesty. You are the risen King. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen Aren't you glad that we serve the God that has conquered sin and death? Let me ask you again. Aren't you glad that we serve the God, the Lord, that has conquered sin and death? We have been made victorious, not because of anything that we've done. But we have been made victorious because of Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, his resurrection his ascension we all now are part of the victory crowd because of Jesus Christ if you have not acknowledged him to be your Lord and Savior I'm charging and challenging you today to give Jesus a try let him come in and be the difference in your life you cannot do it on your own but all things have now been made possible through Jesus the Christ if you would would you trust him today so that you can walk in this liberty, in this freedom, in this victory that has been given to us through the sacrifice and life of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are victorious. Hallelujah. We are saved. Hallelujah. We have been set free. What the world tried to do to silence the voice of Christ gave him the greatest platform in the world. He was resurrected with power. If you don't mind, lift your voices and sing with the team as we sing. They sing this one or two more times. Thanking God for the victory that we have through Jesus Christ. Grab your family, grab them real close, and make a chorus around the table this morning. A chorus around the bed this morning. The fact that the victory that we have is not just for you, but it's for your entire family. Claim it for your family today. Sing, death could not hold it down. Lift your voices. Death could not hold you down. Sing, you are. You are the risen king. Yes. You're seated in majesty. Seated in Talk about our Savior. Say, you are the risen king. You are the risen king. Come on, try it again. Death could not hold you. Chorus, rise in your home. You are the risen king. You are the risen king. If you're driving in your car, let this chorus rise. Seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are the risen king. Yes, you are. You are the Talk about your savior. Come on one more time. Death could not hold, say it. Death could not hold you down. Yeah.
Father, we thank you on today for hearing the cry of our worship as we salute and celebrate you as our King, Savior, and friend. In those moments where we were drawing away from you, you kept on drawing nigh unto us. And so, Father, we would dare not come into your presence as your sons and your daughters, as if the sacrifice of Christ was not enough. Because what Christ did in conquering sin and death was to cover all of our sins. And so, Father, we don't hold on to the past, so we thank you for what you, where you brought us from. In thanksgiving of where we are today, and we acknowledge you as our Savior, Father. And if there's anything in our lives that's not living to what we're speaking, Father, we give that to you. We do our part in handling what we can handle and making good decisions. But Father, where it's, it's bigger than us, we lay on the altar, Father, dying to that, dying to those feelings, dying to that anger, Dying to that frustration, dying to that resentment, dying to that bigotry, dying to the, all of those notions where my body is telling me to do something and my spirit is saying no. Father, because at the end of the day, we want to represent you well as your representation here on the earth. So as your sons and daughters, we come to you as our Abba Father acknowledging you to be everything to us plus more so we thank you for the the right to come to the throne room and father we don't come to the throne begging for anything but we come in full acknowledgement of who you are we've come to worship you we throw out every idol every thought that's in contrast to who you have shown yourself to be. Therefore, we put on our minds the picture of who you are. And today, Father, you may be a healer for some of us. For what we've, the pains we've had to endure this week, you've been a healer for some of us. You've been a provider this week. And so that picture of provision, we put on the altars of our hearts now. So, Father, we thank you. We love you. Have your way in your houses, in your homes, in the churches, in our homes, all over the world, Father, that you may be magnified larger than any of our issues. Father, we praise your name and we bless you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't mind, come on and clap your hands wherever you are. If you're on Facebook, send some emoji praise across the screen with some clapping hands. And tell your brothers and sisters, if you're on YouTube, that you love God. Come on, declare it. Yes, yes. Come on, declare it, declare it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say something. Come on and declare it, declare it. That you love Jesus. You thank God for Jesus today. We don't do this for show, for form, or for fashion. But this is a relationship. And if the cameras were not on, we would still be saying the same thing. That we love God more than life itself. It may seem silly to those that don't know him, but for those that know him in the power of his resurrection, oh yeah, we don't mind giving God thanks. So we praise him on today for who he is. He's everything to us plus more. Well, we so welcome you to the house of the Lord today. My name is Pastor Mac and this is my wife Alexis. And so we thank you all so much for coming into One Church right here in the fair city of Midlothian, Texas. But we've come to worship one Lord of one faith and one baptism. He has bid us to come, and we have answered the call, and we've gathered. You may not be in this building with us, Amen. but right there where you are, our hearts and our minds by now should be in the same place where we focus on God and God alone. So we thank you for coming and being with us on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you real good. Good morning, One Church. Oh, good morning. Good. It is a blessing, amen, to be reminded this morning that our God, he is good, amen, yeah, and his yeah. mercy endures forever. I mean, that's good news, amen, yeah. this morning that in the midst 
of a pandemic, we can declare that our Lord is good. For he has won the victory. Amen. If he can conquer death, amen. He can conquer anything that we face. Amen. And I'm not talking about just the sin of not knowing him. I'm talking about that sin that keeps showing itself in our lives on a daily basis. Amen. Our Lord has the victory over that too. If we would just let him have it. Amen. Come on and give the Lord another hand praise, another emoji praise. Amen. I'm grateful that we serve the God who has conquered sin. He's conquered death. Amen. And his mercy endures forever. It is a blessing to gather with you in worship all over the Metroplex, all over the world this morning. Amen. We welcome you to one church where we are dedicated to building balanced lives of worship. Amen. Building marriages. Amen. Building families and building you. Listen, we Amen. had another wedding yesterday. Amen. We did one more wedding yesterday. In the midst of a pandemic, yeah. we're still experiencing miracles. Yes. Amen. The two people becoming one. one. Amen. That's an amazing Hallelujah. miracle. Amen. That we get to experience as marriages come together to be a reflection. That's Amen. Right. Right. Of God's love for the church. Amen. And so we are excited about it. Amen. The work of the Lord is still taking place. Amen. And even though the doors of the church may be closed, the church is still very much open. Amen. Amen. But we're grateful here at One Church that when you come and you unite, we discover new life at One Church. Amen. We live in connection. We experience impactful worship. We focus on growth and equipping, and we excel in life and ministry. And if you're out there at One Church, give the Lord some emoji praise about the new life we've discovered yeah. at One Church. Amen. If you are visiting with us online, we are certainly delighted that you are here with us this morning, and we want to connect with you. Please make sure that you email us at info at discoveronechurch.org. We want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. Amen. If you have questions about this Lord that we're serving and this Lord that we're praising, yes, send us a yes. question. Question so that we can partner with you um, as you come to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Amen. At this time, we typically greet one another. Amen. We typically do, but I feel like preaching. So y'all, we just go ahead and preach. Y'all bring us, bring, bring the Amen. Uh, table and all that. Let's just preach it. Were you in that same key? Amen. Wherever you were before. Come all right. Well, let's continue to prepare our hearts to hear yeah. from the Lord this morning. Amen. God bless you and welcome. Hallelujah. Oh, tell me. Who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh,
Thank you for the victory we have in you. We acknowledge you as our victor. And we have not been made victorious, victorious because somebody came riding on a white stallion to save the day. But we have been made victorious because of a little baby born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling cloth around the cows and the goats and the pigs. Our Savior came because of his life. His ministry, his declaration of his father, his death on a cross, his blood for our atonement, his resurrection for our deliverance, we have been made victorious. And it's because of this, Father, we thank you and we love you. We thank God for Jesus, for the victory we have because of him. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are. Thank God for victory. We have the victory because of Jesus Christ. The Christ, Christ alone. Oh, yeah. I pray right where you are in your homes that you are reminded that you are mindful of our victory. And we have through Jesus the Christ. Ooh. We celebrate the presence of the Lord once again here. And right there where you are, the Father is right there in the midst of us. The Spirit of God is there with us. We're going to continue our series of sermons today as we started on last week dealing with this um, title of Rewire. Rewire, and we dealt with being rewired for the church regarding our responsibility. And uh, I pray that you would take the time, or that you have the time, make the time to go back through Mac in the morning for the week. Um, and even Wind Up Wednesday Bible study we had online. You can find it on YouTube as well as on Facebook as we try to go through and break this down even, even further to make the application applicable for us. And on today, we're going to continue this thought of, of rewire. And today, we're going to deal with the church must be rewired regarding race. Rewired regarding race. Last week was rewired regarding responsibility. This week is rewired regarding race. And the title of our sermon today is One Head. One Head. As a, as a result of uh, not addressing Bad wiring, we talked about this all last week, but one of the results of not uh, addressing bad wiring is the potential of fire. Uh, and if you had time, I would, I would challenge you to look up some statistics on fires in homes in your area that are started because of faulty wiring. And I would dare not, and I pray you hear my heart, I'm not... I'm poking because I know that there are some people that I know and people that you know that they have been affected by house fire. Um, and so it is a real issue and a, a, something a lot of people have had to work through. But I want us to look at this under the idea that it is so important that if we don't address it, the devastation of a house fire could be the devastation in your own life as well as within the church. So we've got to be willing to address this issue of wiring problems within the church. Uh, and we dealt with it once again on last week, Look at the idea of rewiring regarding re responsibility, that the body of Christ has a responsibility to be the reflection of God in all that we say and all that we do. It's in our lifestyle. Is that right? Everybody say, that's right. And on this week, we're looking at the idea of race. There are, we have some wiring issues within the church regarding ethnicities. 
And so we have to take a look at what does the scripture say to us uh, regarding handling relationships. If we do not address this biblically, we are saying to God that Christ died for nothing. Christ dying was not just to give us salvation so that we will be heirs to heaven, but Christ died for all sin on earth. All right, I'll try this side. Christ died for the sins on earth. So we cannot be saying that Christ's death was good enough for salvation, but not good enough for my anger. We cannot be suggesting that Christ's death was good enough for, for me to have uh, assurance to go to heaven, but Christ's death is not good enough for me to get along with people that don't look like me, people that don't live like me, and possibly people that didn't vote like me. We cannot be saying that as the body of Christ. Therefore, we've got to address some bad wiring that's happening right now in the church. Are you all walking with me today? Uh, we, we even have this concern where um, you have some Christians saying that, that this COVID-19 is not even real. And people are, are questioning, am I going to go to this church because they want me to wear a mask? It's, it's just so amazing how we can find the simplest of things to divide us. If you want to wear a mask... And the building, the people that own the building say wear a mask. I think it just makes common sense to wear a mask, right? If you don't want to wear a mask and the, and the people in the building say you have to wear one, go home. Because people that have had to deal with a family member or a friend that's had COVID-19, they're not questioning if it's real or not. You can find not one doctor or nurse that's working in the ER or any type of medical position that questions if it's real or not. So if you don't think it's real, that's okay. Just stay at home. It makes good sense. Amazon ships everywhere. All right. But even in the church, we allow something like this to divide us. Therefore, my friends, I want to challenge us to look at the idea that we have to deal with some wiring issues within the body of Christ, and I, I, I know we, we we don't wish upon stars, but I do have a wish. I know we, we you know, when you look upon a star, it makes no difference where you. Know, we, I know we've heard the song, but uh, and we as believers, we don't wish. But but I, I have a I have a simple wish. Here, here's my wish. My wish is is that the church, the body of Christ, will stop putting God in the on their preference list. And that's that's my, my wish. If you believe one way and that's your preference, don't. Suggest the Bible is partnering with your partnering with your preference. How about that? How about we leave God's name out of it if it's just something we want to do? <laughs> because we have the church today that we want everybody to see it our way, and we find one one scripture out of context, one little verse to partner with what we wanted to say, and that's not what God is saying. You do understand that the Bible is not a resource book or a reference book for America. All right, I'll say it again. You do realize that the Bible is not a resource book or a reference book for America. The Bible stands alone as God's love letter to all humanity. So you can't take one passage to make it fit what you want, and then when somebody else tries to use it for them, you disqualify their voice. The Bible is not a book for America. The Bible is God's word to humanity. All right, I see it's getting quiet already, but we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to have to go there anyway. So, so, so the reality is the Bible partners with truth and not lies. The Bible speaks to non-deception, but God's view on reality. And what we have done as the American church is we have taken the Bible and we've either wrapped the Bible in a flag or we've tried to stuff the flag in the Bible to make the Bible look like it is, it's written for us. But I know it's bad English, but it ain't. The Bible is God's letter. Everybody say back at me and say humanity. It's for the world. And we as um, the Christians that just happen to live in America, we have been served bad fruit for generations. Because we've used the Bible 
to pardon in partner with what we want the world to believe and, and us to say. And that's not the context of the scriptures. So we got to look at some rewiring issues, everybody. Because we have used God's word wrong. All right. So go with me to a lovely passage of scripture. We're in Ephesians chapter number two. Ephesians 2, a beautiful passage. We'll, be at, we'll begin with verse number 11. When you have not say, I'm already there. I'm already there. I'm already there. Ephesians 2, 11 and 12 says this. Therefore, remember that formerly you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Verse 12, remember that at that at that time you were separated, everybody say separate, from Christ, excluded, everybody say excluded, from citizenship in Israel and foreigners, everybody say foreigners, to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. The thought for today, again, is that we have to deal with some rewiring issues regarding race. And the title of the sermon is One Head. Let me give you just a little bit of um, um contextual value here that the book of Ephesians Paul writes this and there are at least three to four themes in the book of Ephesians one of the central themes of Ephesians is Jesus Christ as the headship as the Lord of the body of Christ and under Christ this theme of Christ being the headship and Lord it deals with the body being unified with the head and so what we have in the church in Ephesus and even in the church in America is that we have body parts that are trying to function without the authority of the head. So Houston, Midlothian, wherever you are, Venus, we have a problem. The body of Christ is trying to represent its lordship without its headship. So Paul speaks to this church in Ephesus, and I believe God is speaking to us today. We have to understand this and own this. Write this down, if you will. We were outsiders. We were outsiders. Unless you are of Jewish heritage, you are an outsider. And for where I see right now, no one in here is of the Jewish heritage. And the average American it's not of Jewish heritage. So get this. All of us, no matter the pigment of your skin, we all are outsiders. Now, this is hard for some of us because we have been, um, we've been given some bad fruit and we believe that the color of our skin has employed us in. But all of us are outsiders. Look at what he says. He says, Gentiles were separate, excluded, Foreigners without hope, without God. That's everybody. All of us are considered to be outsiders. So I, what I want us to make sure that we're clear in what I believe Paul is saying to the church is that if we remain disconnected from the head, we will always live an outside life. You can be connected with people. You can even be connected to uh, what the head looks like. But if the head is not dictating your behaviors, dictating your responses, you still act like an outsider. You ever been around a family member that they don't consider themselves to be in the family? So everything they do is they're there, but they are separate. They're there, but they're not sitting at the table with everybody else. You have those, they, they, they're there, the dinner table is set, and they're sitting at the baby table because they don't feel a part of the big folks table they're there but they're separated this is not this is what Christ came to satisfy that because we have accepted the work of Jesus Christ we no longer have to consider ourselves outsiders so here here's the challenge for us as a as the American church why is it that we found ourselves comfortable on being on the outside to know what the headship has said to know what God wants the church to do, some of us have made peace at being in odds with our leadership. I'm not talking about leadership of the local body. I'm talking about the leadership of God. The word of God is clear 
on what marriage is. The word of God is clear on our responsibilities toward our parents. But yet we find peace because we have given ourselves so many passes. And those passes have become excuses. And those excuses are now just my daily ritual. That I would rather give in to my flesh and my own thinking rather than trusting God for what God is trying to use me to do towards my family. Stop considering yourself an outsider. Do not let the culture of where you are convince you that the relationship with God is not for you. <laughs> and I challenge you, I challenge you, and I charge you to stop looking at yourself as an outsider, as if what Christ has done was good enough for everybody else. But for what you have to still reckon with and deal with, it wasn't good. Christ's resurrection wasn't good enough. Because here's the glory in this. Keep on reading. The verse says in verse 13 and 15 through 15, but now, everybody say, but now. In Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. Now, the first point I said was that you were outside. Let's write this down. You were brought in. So you no longer have to feel like you don't fit. This is helping somebody. That, that, that you don't fit. You have been brought in by Christ. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You have been brought in um, by the blood of Jesus Christ. So listen. You have been brought in by the blood. So there is nothing that someone can do that can power wash and diminish the power in the blood. Yeah. Some, since, since, since we believe what Christ has done, we have accepted the atonement of Christ's blood on the cross. You now, although we don't deserve it, we have been uh, brought in to the fold because of the blood of Jesus. Now, that's some good news right there. It goes on to say, for he himself is our peace and has made the two groups one. Now, understand this. The two groups is not black and white. Again, this is this American Christian way of thinking that we have deduced the issues to it being black and white. Black and white is superfluous to the real issue between Jews and Gentiles. I'll say it again. It's more than black people and white people. It's more than Scottish against Irish people. We're talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Now get this. The, the, the issue between Jews and Gentiles, hear me well, it's a God issue. God made the separation between Jews and Gentiles. And if Christ's resurrection from the cross handled what God put in place between the Jews and Gentiles, it has sure enough handled the issue between black and white. All right. The issue between Jews and Gentiles, God established that because God made the selection of the Jewish nation. And if Christ's resurrection handled that dividing wall, you cannot tell me in America that the resurrection of Christ is not good enough to handle the dividing wall of the different ethnicities right here in America. And if you choose for there to be a dividing wall, shame on you. You may not even be saved. You were brought in. So now this, here's the issue. That no longer am I going to live as if I was bought in. Because I have been brought in. You see, if we're not careful, some of us in this Christian faith, we, 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 have, a, we have an IV of the, of, 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 of the grape juice. And we're not just drinking a cup, but we, we, we taking it in daily. And we, we squeeze in a little squeezy ball and we just, we're sucking it up because we have been bought by a system that's pushing politics from the pulpit. We have been bought by a system because I don't want to deal with my family's DNA and possibly what they have done in the past. I'm just going to keep on sucking up the juice. To make me feel like because my skin is a certain color that I'm better than everybody else. 
And I'm not talking about just white people, black people. All of us have some people like that in our family. We think our blood is better. We think our ice is drier than everybody else's ice. We just, we have an issue because we have been bought. And not in terms of the fact that God brought us in because it was the work of the blood. I didn't make that up. Y'all saw that in the verse, didn't you? Brought near by the blood of Christ. So the blood of Christ has atoned, has paid the cost of our sins. So nobody's money, nobody's platform, nobody's hands on my life is greater than the fact that God has, has brought me in because of his son's blood. I have been satisfied. It has been satisfied by the blood of Jesus. Somebody's got to find peace in that. And I'm no longer looking for people to, to applaud me and to get me on the platform and say my name. You can't buy me. I have been brought in by the blood of Jesus. Now the church, we've got to work with this wiring issue. Because we are allowing politics. We are allowing our preferences to dictate how we respond to God's word. The devil is a liar. And we will not be convinced that we have to pick and choose the scripture and the culture. We are moved by the word of God, and God's word only. And wherever that puts me, I'm satisfied with it. <laughs> if you don't like me, it's okay, saints. It's okay, Sherry. Because I, I, I'm not moved by likability. Likes on my Facebook page mean nothing to me. I want to be accepted by God. So listen, not only were we outsiders, but we have also been brought in. And we have to make the decision, everybody, we're no longer going to be bought by the world. We're going to allow the fact that the blood of Christ has brought us in. Keep on reading me. Go to verse number 15 and 16. It says, his purpose was to create in himself, everybody say himself, one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile them both to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. You know, we have to deal with this real quick. Like, So the problem, the issue that we have here is that we have to make sure we understand that the purpose of Christ's death was so all of this anger would also die. <laughs> you are with me? So it doesn't make sense for Christ to die and my sin to live. Christ died so there would not be any live sin in my life. Now get me here, my here, here the well, that we are sinful creatures because we're still here on earth. But I do not have to give in to my sin, my flesh. Is weak, but my spirit's got to be stronger than my flesh, right? So I don't give in just because my, my body says, go get it. You can pay for it. Won't nobody know. Uh-uh, because -uh, my spirit is stronger than my flesh. <laughs> so not only are we, were we outside us, not only are we now inside us. But write this down. We are one. We are one. Look at the passage. In his purpose to create in himself one new humanity. Listen, y'all, this, this, this was God's purpose because of the dividing wall that was present between the Jewish culture and the Gentile people because of the dividing wall that's present in America today. Christ, God sent Christ to reconcile to be our peace, to unite us, because this is what God ultimately wanted, one new humanity. All right. Now, if you say you believe in Jesus Christ as your resurrected Lord and Savior, you cannot say, I agree with this, but. <laughs> all right, all right, here's that but committee. Rev, I believe it, but. Now, if you have a but behind that, we're going to have to check your, your salvation card. Because you cannot say, Rev, I believe it, but. You, we can't do that. A, a pastor told me this week that he, the lady was at his church and she didn't agree with what he said. So he, he, they, they went into the office with some other people and, and he said, well, this is what the Bible says. She said, Rev, I, I hear what the Bible says, but. 
No, you, you, you can't put a but behind, I agree with the word but. No, no. And if that's your case, listen, call, call me, email me. Cause before I check your Christianity card, let's, let's have a conversation. Because you cannot say, God, I agree, but then I don't agree with you. It doesn't make any sense. If we're one, we are one. Christ has reconciled humanity to be one. In, 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 this, in, this, in this first century church, there was an invisible wall between the Jewish people and the Gentile people there in the temple. So there was not a real wall there, but it was an invisible wall that was there. And there are still some invisible walls in the church today. And I'm not saying every church has to be diverse. Because it, depending on where the church is located, you may not have diversity in the community. But every church should have a heart for it. And if you don't have a heart for it, that means you've got some invisible walls. Trying to keep your community the way you want your community to look. <laughs> we are one. Look at the passage. Verse 16 says again, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Listen, everybody, this points us again to the blood that Christ shed upon the cross. Jesus dying upon the cross was a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. And it has satisfied that blood that ran from Jesus continues to satisfy the debt, the sin of our lives. But we have to own our oneness in God. We can't get away from it. You can't agree with it and say, but. You can't agree with it and say, well, wait, wait, let me ask a question. No, 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 you can't do that. Either Christ did it and it's done or Christ didn't do it at all. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 17, 19, you know this verse says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's what? A new creature. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled himself um, through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. This is what God wanted Christ to accomplish for the world, to reconcile us, to make us one with God. Jot down in your notes Col um, um, the book of Colossians chapter 2. In Colossians 2, 13 and 14, Paul says this, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your, of your flesh, God made you alive in Christ. He forgave us of all sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken away, nailing it to the cross. As the body of Christ, we cannot get away for what the cross represents for us. Because it's there at the cross that Jesus died, and it's where he became sin for us. It all happened there at the cross. Uh, why is it so hard for the church to become one? Why is it so hard for us to act like as siblings we like each other? You do realize that before everything is done, before anybody can say anything, as Christians... We're brothers and sisters first. So why is it that we can have the same Abba Father, but as siblings, we choose not to get along? Y'all, this is a sad situation. I'm going to give you th three things real quick. i got to keep moving. Um, why I think it's difficult. Write this down, if you will. The first thing is that I, we have lost our identity to the world. We, we, we talked um, uh, last week, uh, week before last, from Romans 12, said, be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The problem is we have accepted the grace, but we don't want to live recognizing the mercy. We continue to lose our identity in the culture. Therefore, we allow this racial tension to be the, at its most live, live area within the church because we've lost our identity. What are you going to do about that? 
What are you as the body of Christ personally going to do about that? Here's another reason why it's hard for us to become one. Our actions continue to be a distraction. We keep doing things that won't allow us to come to the table and have a conversation. Our lifestyle is a distraction. Because what we're doing is not promoting the unity, the body of Christ. We're going to deal with that this week, everybody. So make sure you come in on, on Mac in the morning. So not only is our identity um, lost in the world, not only um, uh, is our attention being distracted, but our hearts are slowly moving towards a, 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 the lack of a biblocentric life. Because we're not taking the time to read God's word and to allow God's word to take root in our lives. Our hearts are so far, they're so removed from the things of God. That's why it's so difficult and hard. And some people, some, a, a preacher even said to me, Mac, you don't know how many friends I've lost because of this. Really? People are losing their lives and you're worried about friends. Because the church won't engage in the right kind of conversation. You're worried about friends and, and people re, retweeting you and all that. And we're talking about people's lives. White, black, Hispanic, Mexican, Laotian, Honduran lives that have been lost because the church would not speak against what the Bible has already said should not be. Hmm. We are one. Therefore, it's our responsibility to work out this oneness. What does this oneness look like? Yes, it means conversation, but first of all, it means owning Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted the full work of Christ, being one is not even understandable in your heart and in your mind. I'll say it again. If you have not accepted the full work of Jesus Christ, you don't understand what oneness looks like. If you see a big old dude like me walking up the street and your first notion is to cross the street to the other side, if your first notion is to grab your purse, number one, I'm offended that you think you grabbing your purse can stop me. I'm offended by that. First of all. Uh, I, but if that's your first notion, we have a problem as the church, you all. As the church. So not only... Are we one? Look at verse 17. Verse 17 says to us that we are recipients. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who are near. Get this, everybody. Again, this divided wall has now been demolished. It has been broken down because of Jesus Christ. Christ came to offer peace, not to a section, not to a group, not to a nationality or a personality, but to humanity. And all of us have been made recipients of this peace. Did you get that? All of us are recipients of this peace. This grace that God has given us has been deployed to the entire world. This is why it's difficult for some Americans, some Christian Americans to see outside of the United States of America. Because we, our worldview is Texas. Our worldview is the Gulf Coast building a wall. Our, our, our worldview is very limited. We can't see past Grand Prairie. We, 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 we can't see past Garland. You know some people. You know, I'm just saying something. We, 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 we can't see past Midlothian and Ellen. We can't see far. So our world perspective is so skewed and off. Do you understand that, that there are other places in the world that are having greater issues than what we're dealing with right now? And we think everything is wrapped up around us right here in America. Right here in America. No, no, no. Listen, um, right now in Afghanistan, the Taliban insurgents are still fighting the Islamic State militia, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and they look more alike than we do. In Yemen, the UN has declared that, that Yemen um, is one of the most, um, 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 what is the word I'm looking for, um, um, 
inhumane places to live. And all of them look more alike than we do. In Venezuela, you have insurrections happening. In the Ukraine, you have insurrections happening. And right here in these, in quotes, United States of America. We have a problem because my brother, my sister has, different, has a different skin tone than I do. We are so silly that we allow two millimeters of skin color to distract and destroy the unity of the body of Christ. I'll say it again. Y'all quote me that I said it. We are so silly that we allow two millimeters of skin to diminish the value of the cross, the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, and we call ourselves the church. Y'all, we have some rewiring issues regarding race and ethnicities. And if we're going to do it God's way, we've got to accept what the word says, everybody. That this issue with cultures and ethnicities is far greater than what's happening right here in America. Can you imagine if we were to deal with this racial tension, how further down the road we would be as Americans? I'll say, listen, y'all hear me. If we were to deal with this, can you imagine how much further down the road we would be? I, I, I don't consider America a melting pot. Y'all, that doesn't really make sense. Because when you melt something, it loses its beginning substance. So we're not a melting pot. We, we just stew together. Because I, I don't lose who I am to be in this pot. The Lord takes me. He made me this way. And I'm not saying of this 6'3", 300, I got on the scale yesterday, it was 328 pounds. I'm not ashamed of this. This is me. And I'm not going to dis diminish and disqualify me to make you feel good. We're not in the melting pot. We, we stewing together. And when you have a good stew, that means stuff start tasting good. They start tasting better together. They didn't taste well by themselves. I can take carrots a whole lot better in a stew than I can just out of the pack. Okay. All right. All right. We are recipients of the same peace. Get this, y'all. God didn't give white folks better peace than he gave uh, Indians. He didn't give Indians better peace than he gave Irishmen. He gave us all same peace. And if we're going to be the body of Christ, we've got to figure out how do we work out this peace of reconciliation that has already been satisfied. Y'all, I, I, listen, call me crazy as some do, but I'm not into all this pulpit swap stuff. Listen, hear my heart. It's cool if we want to meet people. It has its place for me to go to a predominantly white church and that predominantly white church pastor who may be white to come preach over here. It's cool for the introduction of meeting people. But it doesn't do anything for walking out together if all we're doing is coming and you're hearing my praise team sing, I'm hearing your praise team sing, and that's about it. There's got to be more of working out what reconciliation is. We don't work towards reconciliation. If we work toward it, we're saying that Christ's resurrection was not good enough. And we got to figure it out because Christ couldn't figure it out. And that cannot be what we're saying. So that means since we're not working towards it, we have to work reconciliation out in our lives. Just like we're working out our salvation. We have to work out. What reconciliation is, that means I've got to deal with some of this stuff in my heart that would prevent me, that would keep me from getting to know somebody that doesn't look like me. I've got to work that part out. I don't do this so that we can be reconciled. Reconciliation has already happened. I don't try this side. You with your mean self, reconciliation has already happened. It's already done. Now, if I receive it and work it out, it's up to me. All right. We'll deal with that this week. I got one more thing that we'll be done. Look at verse 18. 18 through 22 says this. For through him we both 
have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers. Y'all see how Paul is writing this thing? Uh, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Look at verse 21. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22. And in him, you are, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. All right. So let's go ahead and wrap this up, if you don't mind. So the first thing that we put on the table is that we were outsiders. We were outsiders. The next thought is that we were brought in. We were brought in. The third thought is we are one. We are one. The fourth thought was um, we are recipients. And the final thought is we are his temples of worship. We are his temples of worship. Now get this, y'all. We don't have to do a whole lot of exegetical work on this because the scripture reads really plain and clear. Really plain and clear. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So get this, everybody. Access has now no longer been denied to us because of what Christ satisfied on the cross. Many of us, some of us, have gone to get um, a, a line of credit. And as we stood there trying to be poised and satisfied in our ethic, on the inside we were wondering, Lord, is it going to go through? <laughs> Listen, I'm just, pardon me for being personal, but I remember when I, when I was younger, when I, I was like, well, Lord. And, and, you know, I was so crazy. I had no reason to think that it wouldn't go through because I didn't have bad credit at the time. So I was like, Lord, is it going to work? And, but but, but salvation-wise, relationship-wise, we can no longer be denied. Boy, y'all, that's some good news somewhere. Somebody going to see this on Thursday. They're going to they're gonna really praise the Lord. Because denial is now no longer part of what your ears understand. You will no longer, never, ever be denied because of what Christ did for us on the cross. <laughs> and because I'm not denied anymore, I am no longer somebody on the outside. I'm no longer a foreigner. You see, if you still view me as a foreigner, you'll try to hold back my citizenship rights. <laughs> if you still see me as a, as a stranger, uh, you, you want to hold back my citizenship. Uh -huh. You see, for a long time, they didn't consider me as a black man, a whole person. They held back my citizenship rights. And But, no, but what Jesus says... Paul writes to the unction of the Holy Ghost that we're no longer strangers, nor are we follow a foreign stranger and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens. So I have the right now to work, to vote, and pay taxes. Because I'm a citizen of these here lands. I may not have come on my own, but now I'm here. So now I'm in the stew pot of a miracle, and so now I am a citizen. Not only am I a citizen here in America, but y'all greater than this, I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. So I'm no longer held bound by these, these, these man-made laws. Now I live according to the laws of the kingdom of God. Yes, sir, because I am a fellow citizen. And when you give your life to Jesus... You're no longer that person on the outside trying to figure out will they ever let me in. No, the access has been given to you. <laughs> the access has been given to you because of Jesus Christ. Can I stop here and challenge us this morning? That God has given you access. So what will you now do with this access to God? I challenge you to honor the fact that God has given you access so that he can dwell in you. And so your life now becomes a temple of worship. Yeah. Says here in verse number 21. In him the whole building is built. It's joined together and rises to become 
a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too were built, being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. So Christ did all of this to give us access. So not only will we have access to God, but here it is, God will have access to us. Because God desires to dwell in his people. God wants us to see ourselves as his temple. And he wants to live inside of us. Journey with me real quick to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse number 4 says this. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Get to verse number six says this For in the scripture it says, See, I have a stone, lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and that one who trusted him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Here's verse I made. And a stone that causes people to stumble. And a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message. Which is also what we were destined for. If we do not all, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. The same cornerstone by which we ought to be living will now become a stumbling block to make us fall. So I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters, to give God a trial today and to allow God access into your heart and let him come in and now make and be the difference in you. As much as I want to move on, I got to finish this passage of 1 Peter because it goes on to say in verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you were not received, have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. My brothers and sisters, will you give God access into your life? Will you give him access into your heart and allow the power of God's word to start moving out those things that should not be? Because you now own the fact that your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. So let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now I will hide God's word in my heart, so I shall not sin against God anymore. I recognize that my body now belongs to the Lord, and I am his temple. So I don't let everything come into this temple. I watch the music I listen to because this temple has been sanctified for the power of the Lord. I watch the books that I read because everything is not right for this body to take in anymore. I watch the kind of television shows I see because my eye gate speaks to and it infiltrates my heart because my body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit so I have to be very careful what I allow inside of my mind inside of my eyes inside of my heart so I challenge you my brothers and my sisters give access to the Lord on today and let him come in and change your life around is there anybody watching here today that you don't mind giving God access you don't mind allowing God to be your Lord, Savior, and your ruler. Give him access. In Psalm 22, it says that, that he is enthroned by the praises of Israel. And I don't believe God loves Israel more than he loves us. And so if Israel could praise God and build a throne for God to sit in, how about in your own personal temples? If you start praising God, you will literally build a, a seat for God to sit down in. And David says he inhabits the praises of his people so in your temple of worship this morning would you mind giving God thanks
thanks for making himself known to you. Would you mind giving God thanks for, the, for what Christ has done for us on the cross? I'm so glad that I found out who Jesus is. He came in and he made everything brand new. Is anybody thanking God for Jesus this morning? Come on and clap your hands and give God thanks today. Come on and raise your voices and give him praise today. Because I know who Jesus is. One head. One head. Our God cares less about you being a Republican or a Democrat. One head. God does not care if you immunize your children if you don't. One head. God does not care if you go to private school or public school. One head. We keep bringing in our preferences and then try to bring in God to qualify our preferences. And God has given us the ability to make decisions. So you can't say as a, as a Democrat that God is on your side. And your Republican siblings say, God is on my side. So we make God look at, as if he's a schizophrenic deity. One head. Not a preferential head, but one head. And that's Jesus the Christ. And if you have a problem with that, you might not be saved. So I challenge and I charge you today. Don't get so caught up in the emotion of Max saying I may not be saved without allowing it to register in your heart. Am I questioning the authority? Am I questioning the lordship of Jesus Christ? Am I looking at God and saying, God, Jesus' death was not enough. I deserve the right to be angry. I deserve the right to say that there are no racial tensions in America. You may not want to own it, but our brothers and sisters across this great country, we have some issues. We must be willing to address these things, everybody. And again, listen to what I'm saying. Hear my heart, hear my heart well. As the body of Christ. As the body of Christ. Our narrative must be what the scriptures have already said. We don't have to come up with something new. We don't have to have another panel discussion to figure out what, what is the church's response going to be. God has already spoken. The concern is, are we going to trust what God has said? Or do we still want to make it up as we go? God allows us, he wants us to be a temple of worship. Will you give him entry in your heart today? And allow him to do only what God can do. You have to make this decision today. All we want to do is present Jesus to you. He's standing at the door knocking. Will you give him entry today? Let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you. I'm free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Sing with me and say, Oh, my. It's my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Give him entry. Give him entry. Lord, I'm free. 
Sing it again, oh. Free to live. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Come on, say it again. Oh, 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 oh. free to dance and sing. Oh, my. I'm free. I'm free. Come on, sing with us. Free to dance. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. Put the sun set free. It's free indeed. Lord, I'm free. Yeah. I'm a free worshiper. I accept the blood of Jesus. Would you give Jesus a try today? Lord, I'm free. If you have questions about salvation, email us at info at discoveronechurch.org. Send us a message right there on Facebook or on YouTube so we can talk about this freedom. I'm a free worshiper. I can raise my hands and worship. I can raise my voice and worship. Because I'm free through Jesus, I'm victorious. Whom the Son is set free, is now free indeed. Oh Lord, I'm free. Come on, say it again. I'm a free worshiper. Can you smile about it? Lord, I'm free. I'm free to express my joy. I'm a free worshiper. Oh Lord, I'm free. Here's our praise to the Father. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. No longer will sin have control over me. Oh my, thank God I'm free. Yes, and I'll never be bound again. Come on, sing with us. Oh, my singer, thank God, say, thank God, free. And I'll never say, I'll never be bound again. Be bound Come on, again. speak this over your own life. Take your voice and say, oh, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never thank be bound God. Say one more time. Here we go. It says, and thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. Come on, sing with us. Everybody say, and say, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. There's victory happening all over thank your home. God, never Deliverance, never is all over your home. Deliverance is happening even now. Receive the salvation of the Father through Jesus. And say, thank God I'm free. Say, Never go back. Be bound again. The cover with a great big voice. Lift your voice and say, and thank God I'm free. And I'll never go back. Be bound again. Come on, raise your voice. Raise your voice say, and thank God I'm free. I'll never go back. Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. I'm 
free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship lord i'm free lord i'm free i'm not ashamed to declare with everybody free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship lord i'm free 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 i'm declaring my freedom lord i'm free oh lord i'm free yeah lord i'm free oh lord we all sing with us come just declare it and sing and say and lord i'm free lord i'm free and lord i'm free there you go lord i'm free Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Declare your freedom, say it, and Lord. Lord, I'm free. 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 Come on, y'all, we're free today. Lord, I'm free. Say it again, Lord, I'm free. Say it. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Your chains holding me. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Receive it today. Do you receive Jesus today? Just declare over and over. Lord, I'm free. We'll pray with you. Send us a message. We will respond in prayer with you. Lord, I'm free. Come on, one more time. Lord, I'm free. resting it's just a blessing so praise the Lord hallelujah I'm free I am free oh my praise the Lord I am free no longer bound no more Change holding me, my soul is resting. It's just a blessing. We all sing with us, everybody sing and praise. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'm free. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the clarity of your voice. That no matter what the culture has fed me in the past. We receive the word, your word on today that now allows this, this, this spring of life within us that instead of a fire consuming our churches and consuming our communities, the water of life that's within us, we use this water to dash out all these fires that are trying to spark up. We do, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, go in to do some rewiring in our own hearts. So that we will see every person that comes our way as your son and your daughter, as our brother and sister. They may not smell like us. They may not look like us. They may not live like us. They may not vote like us. But they're still our brothers and sisters. And as the body of Christ, we have the responsibility to love everybody. Even those that are our professed enemies. 
that fulfills the scriptures that fulfills the covenant of grace when we do it your way so father I pray for my brothers and sisters that are struggling that have a heart for you but are yet struggling because they're trying to balance what the word is saying to what grandfather told them a long time ago to what their childhood pastor said to them a long time ago that does not balance with the scriptures Father, give them grace. Give us grace to wrestle with that. We still choose you of whatever the culture tries to say. We choose you as your vessels of worship, as your temples. Father, we thank you. Lord, bless us and keep us as we do it your way. May your grace shine upon us. And may your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lift your countenance upon us and give us your peace. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here with us today. We look forward to seeing you for Mac in the morning every day at 6 a.m. on Facebook or on YouTube. Wednesday night we have uh, Wanda Wednesday in Bible study live on Facebook and YouTube. Come and let's go further in and deeper down together. We love you. We'll see you next week. And we praise the Lord for being good. Only the God that we serve would be willing to choose to display his love for us. And that while we were yet sinners, he chose to die for us. And then he chose to be alive for us. And we know that if he's capable of Calvary, and if he's capable of resurrection, then he's capable of reconciliation, and he's capable of rewiring here. So we're just going to sing this song about the, the greatness of the Lord. It's a song you already know, so get with us. Water. You turned into one You opened the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no Course out with me say our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord you are higher. Thank you.
Awesome and power, I go. 